Hi, I'm Kristen, and today I've got kind of uh, another story for you. This time it's about me buying another sewing machine. Ta da! <laughs> if you are a regular watcher of the channel, you probably know some of the history of my previous um, sewing machine purchases. Oh, I'm a relatively new quilter and sewer. This channel is all about kind of being a confident beginner and just trying stuff. Anyways, even though I only got into quilting during COVID, I've bought a few machines since then. <laughs> and if you are not familiar with all of that and you haven't been watching the channel for a while, there are other videos basically about how I moved up from a Janome machine, which I started with before quilting to kind of sew outdoor cushions and then used it for quilting, used it when I started the channel and then decided I needed more throat space, upgraded to a Bernina, then decided that wasn't for me and traded it in. So there's a video about why for that, if anyone's interested. And then I bought the Faf Quilt Expression 720, which I still have, I'm not getting rid of. <laughs> and I have a review of that where I guess I realized what a lot of you already know and told me in the comments of previous videos that one machine can't do everything you're gonna want it to do if you're sewing as much as I am. <laughs> so anyway, uh, oh, and I also, I'm getting back to this one, I promise. Uh, I also, I'm pointing at it over there, bought uh, what, I, what I guess is an entry level long arm, the Moxie, Handy Quilter Moxie long arm. Got another video about that. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so I bought a lot of stuff. I buy stuff. It's an issue. Um, <laughs> anyways, after I got the Faf and I'd been using it for a while, and was watching other quilters and stuff on YouTube and other places, I started to get a hankering for a straight stitch machine. So like a straight stitch only semi-industrial machine kind of thing. And there's like, so people buy Jukies, there's various models that people swear by for that. And Janome HD9 is the other one. And that was the one that I was like, oh, I think I really like the look of that. It can sew really fast. It can sew lots of heavy duty stuff like denim and, leather and things like that. Lots of people buy it for bag making. And I kind of started stalking <laughs> HD9 owners. I was in a Facebook group for them, even though I didn't own one, just to see if I wanted to buy one. And then I tried one out at the Festival of Quilts this year in Birmingham. I really liked how it sewed, but the cut it's here in the, I'm in the UK. I know it, I'm Canadian, so I don't sound it, but I, I live in Scotland. Anyway, the cost of the HD9 here is £1,295, so it's not cheap. <laughs> uh, and the show discount when I went to try it out was only like £100 off, so uh, it just didn't quite sway me. So I just couldn't quite justify it. Like the, the FAF does straight stitches, you know, I can do most things. There's just a few sometimes when I'm trying to sew thick things, it just doesn't quite do what I want it to do and just... I just like the idea of the speed as well. Anyway, so anyhow, I basically wanted a thing I didn't need, right? So I couldn't justify paying the twelve ninety five, dollars uh, so I didn't buy it. But as you may also know if you watch the channel, I also lurk around in Quilters D-Stash groups on Facebook. Usually I'm buying their leftover fabric or quilting tools or things like that. But some of them also sell sewing machines. And so someone was selling, selling this one. So it's secondhand. It's the Janome 1600 PQC. So it's the forerunner to the HD9, right? So it's the one they were making before they kind of upgraded and did the HD9. And the HD9 has had two versions now. And so you can still buy it new some places. I saw somewhere in the UK here, I think one place, um, you can buy it for 895 pounds and so still expensive. <laughs> and secondhand on this Facebook group, I found it for 400 pounds and she had all these kind of extras included. Uh, so there were extra feet. I'll show you some, I think I've got a video of me unpacking it with, in really poor lighting, but I'll show you. So she, she sent me lots of extra sewing needles and feet that I would have had to buy separately. So it seemed like a fairly good deal and worth kind of taking a punt. Now, I know, some of you are gonna be like, well, but the issue, those of you who've seen the other videos, will be like the issue possibly with your Bernina, there was a big debate in the comments, was whether or not it was the model or the fact that I had bought it X display. And so it was just a bit of a lemon because it was a used machine and it had way more use than I thought it had. 
So why am I buying another secondhand machine? Well, <laughs> I like to buy other people's unwanted stuff. That's also an issue that I have. And there was just something about the lady's post. You know, she said it was, I know people can say anything, but anyway, she said, <laughs> she said it was lightly used, that it recently been serviced. And I just trusted her. Now, should we, should we trust my instincts? Possibly not. But I figured with that much of a discount, it was possibly worth me taking the risk. You might not choose to make the same decision. I'm not counseling you. This is a story about me, not a sewing machine expert who buys too many things. This is not advice. So anyway, <laughs> uh, so I bought it. The lady was lovely, packed it up nicely. I paid a courier charge because she's in England and she sent it to me and it seems to be in really good working order to me, I think. Uh, I did go out and buy new the table that it slots into to give it the flatbed because I'm ridiculous like that. Cause it did come with a big table. I think I have a photo of it where I could just have it up on a table and all that, you know, but I'm used to the flatbed because I've got the faff in my horn cabinet and I'm not getting rid of the faff because obviously it does all the other stitches, the zigzag and everything else. So I've kind of set myself up here in my decadent sewing nest <laughs> so I can sew here and I've got my cutting mat here and then I can turn around and sew with another colored thread potentially or another stitch and then my iron's just over here this is my ironing mat and I can put my coffee over here <laughs> and I can have my kids or whoever sit there and chat to me so I don't have to I don't have to move I can just <laughs> anyway this is how I like to sew so uh, since I got this I've been I've been doing lots of crumb piecing because this is what I need the nest for is that kind of repetitive you know where I'm sewing ironing trimming sewing ironing trimming and all anyway so it's making me happy um <laughs> but I will for any of you who's interested I will give you more details about the new machine and how it's different from the HD9 so I've got notes on my phone hang on so because this is not a proper review because I've only had this for a week or two but and uh as I said I don't know where you are whether you can buy it new so I'm not saying go out and buy this one but if you're liking the sound of this one the HD9 I guess is the new one I'll put links in the description but anyway the difference is let me find them okay so both the 1600 and the HD9 don't use standard needles. So they use what's called like an HL system needle. And it's different in that it threads from the side. So I might show you in another picture, but basically you put the thread in that way, not that way, which is different, I guess. Straight stitch only. So uh, you can't do zigzag or anything like that on it. It does have, um, usually you have to buy it separately, but the woman sent it to me like a, a plate so there's you unscrew this plate that's on here and you sew one on, or not sew one on ugh, you screw one on <laughs> that covers the feed dogs uh and you can do free motion but it's not like a simple you know other machines you can just toggle and the feed dogs go down or whatever that's this you have to get out the screwdriver and put that other plate on but anyway she sent me all the stuff i would need to do that so you can do free motion but otherwise it's just straight stitch oh this has gone off right uh it's a high shank machine, if that matters to you. So aluminum body uh, and the maximum uh, stitches per minute is 1600. So it's pretty fast. So it's got a slow, a medium and a fast. And I've just been using it on the fast and it's lovely. It's got a thread cutter, which is really loud. I'll record that so you can hear it. And then a knee lift. And I know I've, I said pre with, on previous machines that have had knee lifts that I haven't used them because I like the whole hover foot thing. And I do, I would really prefer the hover foot thing, but I'm getting used to the knee lift, it's okay. It's got needle up down memory, meaning that like, so it doesn't really remember between uses, but when you turn it on, you can press needle down and then it'll always stop needle down or needle up until you turn it off again. Then you tell it what to do next time you turn it on. It's got an independent bobbin, bobbin winding motor. So you can wind the bobbin while you're sewing, but I haven't used that. And I feel like one of my other machines had that too. And I just don't, I don't know, maybe if you're under a deadline or something, but I'm like, if I'm setting it up to do the bobbin, I'm not sewing. Anyway, I don't, I don't know. Anyway, it's there. And it's got a lot of throat space. Throat space is always my 
issue. I always want lots of room over here because obviously I'm talking about quilts and things like that. Even though I've got the, the moxie, I still do do some things on on my domestic machines or whatever you call this now. And so I like the throat space. Anyway, what else is different? What did I write? Let's see. Oh yeah. So the HD9 has bigger bobbins, especially the version two HD9. It's got like jumbo bobbins, so they don't run out as much, but they're more expensive. So the bobbins for this one cost one pound 40 in the UK and the HD9 version two bobbins, which are 1.4 times bigger, cost six pound 50 here in the UK. So it's quite a lot more expensive anyway, but the lady sent me a whole bunch of, a whole bunch of bobbins. So I don't think I have to buy any, um, even though they are cheaper. I don't, I don't think I need any more. Uh, and what else? The light is apparently brighter on the HD nine and the HD nine has a dual threading system. So they've got one path for super thick thread, like these tech threads. I don't know much about them, but they used in like heavy duty bag making. But so far I've been able to sew pretty thick stuff through here. And I've had, I've seen in my stocking on the HD9 Facebook group, I've seen folk talking about how similar this machine is to that one in terms of putting thick things through it. So I think unless you're like a serious like putting layers and layers of leather to make bag straps and I don't I don't know. Um I don't I don't think I need it to be that heavy duty. But I guess if I find that there's thick things that it won't sew, that's an excuse for me to buy something else in the future. <laughs> but anyways, I'm not I'm not I'm not planning it right now. And I was really proud of myself of how long it took me to buy this one from when I had the idea about wanting a straight stitch machine. It was pretty much like a year. Like, and for me, that's unheard of. Usually I think I want to try something and I just try it. I don't sit around thinking about it. So this was like a measure, <laughs> a lot, like a, an exercise in patience for me that I didn't just run out and buy the brand new HD9. The, which I know sounds decadent ridiculous, but anyway, the table was new. Uh, so it was 259 pounds. Very much an extravagance, did not need it, but I really like it because <laughs> I really like a flatbed. And I, yeah, I guess that's the thing that, that kind of always confused me about this one and the HD9 actually, because the folk who seem to use the HD9 use it for bag making, but it doesn't, even on a tabletop, it doesn't have a proper free arm. You ha they have, we're coming up with all these solutions to like lift it and angle it and do all this stuff in order to use use it as a free arm system. So that's, something I would need to think about how I was going to do if I was going to try and do something like that on here in general, because this one I can lift and lower and just take this out. If I, if I had anything I needed a free arm for, I'd probably use the path at this point. But I guess if I was doing heavy duty bag making, I'd come up with something else. So it's got in this table, it's got this little flap and it's the same in the extension table that it comes with. And then you just take that off. And then I'm just gonna angle you here so you can see the little, but it's kind of the lighting's not great, but basically the bobbin is in here and you just pull it out. There it is. So, and it's very similar to the Moxie bobbins are just smaller and the bobbin case. So um, just gonna pop that back in. And this machine does need to be oiled. And I know I have moaned in the past about oiling the Bernina, but I've gotten used to the oiling with the Moxie. So um, I put one drop of oil here, one up here, and then there's a little spot down there and in the bobbin housing thing, place where the case goes, basically. So, and I do, do that pretty much every time I change the bobbin. So it's not too bad. And then that just goes back in there and close that. And you've got a lovely flatbed. All right, now I'll just show you the speed quickly. So it's on the fastest speed here. Um, I've already, so this is the needle up down. I already had it on the needle down, but just to show you, you can kind of change that. And then let's just go pedal to the metal. <laughs> And then you want to hear the sound of the thread cutter. Very severe. <laughs> Anyways. Okay. And now here. Now here is where you can probably see the thread going in sideways. So that's 
a little bit different um, because of the different needles. And let's try just for kicks some layers of denim, shall we? So that's just a strip of denim. So there's two. Let's do four. Pretty much the same. Should have pulled it again. And you can kind of lift the thing even more there. She did send me an even feed foot. So maybe I should be using that with lots of layers, but anyway. There's eight, so I can't imagine what I would need to sew more than eight layers of denim. <laughs> but anyway, so it can do it. So uh, yeah, I'm pretty pleased with it. The other thing, my little setup here that I like is that I can um, take, so I can, yeah, go back and forth, have two different thread colors, all that cool stuff. But I can also take this out, which is the thing that gives the flat bed in the horn and lower this. Now that's out the way. That's just my cable for my own. And then put this on, which is the insert, and then I could be cutting on here. If I need to cut something bigger, I could get rid of all my you can't see them, but off camera over here I've got my rulers and my scissor thing and whatever. I could move all of that and put my great big cutting mat on top of here. And use that. So I've got options. Um, generally, you probably have seen me, if you've watched the show before, get on the floor with my massive cutting mat and just cut there, which I might keep doing, <laughs> to be honest. But I can do this if I want to. So anyway, I'm excited about it, really enjoying it. The, th the things I like about it are the speed and it's quieter. It's quieter than the other machine, which I didn't expect, except for the thread cutter, which is really noisy. And, <laughs> and, um, and I just like the feeling of it. I, I never thought I was going to be one of those people who was like going on about the feel of a sewing machine, like a feel of a car or something, but I, I like it. And I'm enjoying, so I'm enjoying my new toy. Anyway, this is not, as I said, a proper review and it's not advice for you to go out and buy secondhand machines on Facebook. That's probably not the greatest way to go about buying machines and I could still live to regret this, who knows. But anyway, uh, you guys, especially those of you, those of you who do watch the channel on a regular basis, feel like my virtual sewing friends. And so I just wanted to update you on my latest ridiculous purchase, <laughs> basically. That's pretty much it for now. If you have any questions about it, feel free to ask in the comments. I'll try and answer them, but I'm not an expert on this machine or any machine, as I've said multiple times. And I'd love to hear, I know, in my other videos, there were loads of comments from folk who own way more machines than me that made me feel so much better, <laughs> frankly. So I'd love to hear how many machines you own to make me feel better again. Uh, and I hope that this video can make some of you feel better if you've made impulse purchases or you own a lot of machines or whatever. You're not alone and you're probably not as silly as me, so <laughs> that's fine. Um, anyway, I also just want to make sure that I say for those of you who are one beginners or two can't afford to be as ridiculous as me <laughs> you don't need all these machines you don't need flat beds and sewing cabinets you can sew in your bedroom with a basic sewing machine used new whatever you can get your hands on just start with whatever you have continue with whatever you have if it's working it's fine this is supposed to be a fun hobby it's just that some of us take it to the extreme and buy lots of toys because we think that's going to make us better sewers or for somehow we just find sewing with different things more fun. But it's definitely not a requirement. So I'm not saying you need a straight stitch only machine or that you need multiple machines or anything like that. I'm just telling you what I've done, okay? So please don't uh, feel like uh, you can't be a good quilter or you can't sew if you don't have all the doodads. It's just not true. No matter where you are, you can always get envy for someone else. So if you've got one machine, you're gonna envy the person with two. If you've got you know, an expensive fast machine, you're gonna envy the person with a straight stitch machine and then go out and buy one on Facebook. <laughs> you know, so uh, the grass is always greener and it will always be greener. And we just have to kind of 
control ourselves or not control ourselves as we see fit, basically. So yeah, please don't take this at, uh, as any judgment on any machine you are sewing on. I don't know anything about your situation and I'm just telling you about mine. So uh, please do enjoy your sewing with whatever machine you happen to have. I'm sure it's great. If you like videos like this or the type of videos that I do normally, which is more like scrap quilting projects, then do please subscribe if you haven't already. Leave me a comment, let me know what you think, and I hope to see you next time. Thanks so much for spending time with me. Bye.